Hello, and welcome to Abstract Algebra 2. This is the first of videos that I'll be putting online on my YouTube channel that will help to structure our pace through the course this semester. In this video, we're going to look at a few things that just kind of set the table for us this semester. First of all, what is Abstract Algebra? What is the subject material that we're going to be looking at this semester? I'll say a little bit more about this in the Objectives video, which follows this one, but just a, a quick introduction on this one. Secondly, where does the story begin? In other words, what am I going to be expecting you to bring to the classroom on the first day? As far as prerequisites, what are you already going to have to have under your belt in order to be successful on day one? And then, what is class going to look like? You might suspect that because I'm recording this video that there's something a little different about how we're going to do class this semester, and you'd be right. So what is the flow of our class this semester going to be like? And then finally, what are the important dates? that we need to keep in mind on the calendar. When are the big exams, when are the breaks, etc. just to get those things under our belt right away. So let's talk first about what abstract algebra is. We might think about it in a couple of different ways. First of all, abstract algebra, as you probably already know having taken the first semester, is what makes arithmetic tick. In other words, why, for instance, is 2 times 3 the same thing as 3 times 2? In other words, we have the commutative property of multiplication of integers, but that it's not the same for subtraction as it is for multiplication. It's one of those questions of arithmetic that, you know, we, we'd like to understand in a bigger context. Secondly, and this is going to be really the one that consumes us this semester and the second semester of abstract algebra, what is the big picture on solving equations? Just as an example, we have an equation like x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. Well, that equation has two solutions, and both of those solutions are integers. x equals 1 and x equals 3. We can find those in a variety of different ways. But even if we change just a small thing about that equation, turn it into x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0, just changing that middle coefficient, we find out now that this no longer has integer solutions. In fact, it doesn't even have rational number solutions. The solutions to that equation are irrational. Change something else about it, x squared minus 4x plus 5, so change the last coefficient. And suddenly, there aren't even any real numbers that solve this particular equation. So what's the big picture? What's really going on here? What can we say about an equation, specifically a polynomial equation, that will help us to know whether or not it has solutions, and if it has solutions, what kind of solutions does it have? That's the big picture that we're going to be shooting for this semester. <clears throat> so why are these three situations so different one from another? All right, so what about prerequisites? What do you have to have coming in? What are you bringing to the table? Well, abstract algebra in its first semester is really about two things, groups and homomorphisms. Groups are the main objects that you study in abstract algebra 1, and homomorphisms are the functions that can compare one group to another group. So as an example of what you'll need to know about groups, you need to know what's the definition of a group, of course. What are some main examples of groups that we might study? So these include the cyclic groups, Z mod N, symmetric groups, dihedral groups, Cartesian products of groups. I've also listed UN here. Those are the uh, multiplicative groups um, of integers. Also subgroups, so how to identify a smaller group within a bigger group. In other words, all the elements are elements of the bigger group, but the operation is the same. Especially, those subgroups that we're most interested in are those that are normal. In other words, those in which the action on the left and on the right uh, by group elements gives you the same cosets. Um, and then quotient groups, so how do we take a normal subgroup of a group and quotient out by that normal subgroup? What do we get? On the homomorphism side, just again, the definition of what is a homomorphism. It's a function from one group into another group, and that function has the property that a product, in other words, the group operation on the domain, coincides with the group operation in the uh, codomain. Um, also, what is the image and what is the kernel of a homomorphism? Uh, both of them are subgroups of their respective groups, and in the case of the kernel, is actually a normal subgroup. Um, and then, of course, any time we ask about functions, we're going to care about these important properties of functions, like whether a function is one-to-one, -one, whether a function is onto, and, of course, in the world of groups, if a homomorphism is both one-to-one -one and onto, then that's the special case that we call an isomorphism, where we compare two groups and find them to pretty much be the same thing. Now, don't worry if you don't have all this stuff under your belt immediately, because the first thing we're going to do this semester is review this material, extend it a little bit, and just kind of play around with groups uh, for the first few weeks. And we're going to do so in such a way that's going to be most important to us later on in the semester. So we're not exactly going to be rehashing everything from Abstract Algebra 1. Instead, we're going to be taking what you had from Abstract 1 and just extending it a little bit further. So no worries if you don't have this stuff at your immediate command. So what is class going to look like? So the first thing we're going to have you do 
this semester is what you're doing right now, and that is to access a short pre-class video. Um, these are going to be posted again on my YouTube feed, which you'll be able to subscribe to through YouTube. These will also show up. The YouTube feed will be on our course Moodle site. Um, the purpose of these short videos before class is to preview the material of the day. So whatever you, we do in class that day, you're going to already have some exposure to by watching this video. Of course, we, you know, I'm going to encourage you to read other textbook resources and other materials out there too, but most importantly to structure what's going on in class, watch these videos before you come to class. At the beginning of each class, then, we're going to use the first 15 or 20 minutes to handle your questions and answers. In other words, I'm not going to be going back over what was already in the video that you just watched. Instead, we're going to use this time at the beginning of class to iron out any questions about what was in those videos. So, rather than a rehash, this is a chance for your questions and answers to be uh, taken care of right away. Before we launch into what you're going to spend most of your time doing in class, and that is group discussion and group problem solving and presentation one to another. Honestly, this is the part that really requires you to be in class with your classmates and with myself. That's the problem solving part. After all, that's what this whole subject is about, this mathematics. It's about solving problems. Uh, so, in groups, you'll be solving problems one with another, cooperatively, of course, investigating questions, um, investigating definitions, proving theorems, communicating one with another, and really just helping each other to understand this abstract algebra as we go along. So that's basically how this semester is going to work. So as an example, suppose I, before class, assign you a short video. And these videos are going to be pretty brief, five to ten minutes or something. These are not going to be substantial investments of your time. So before class, maybe you'll watch a little short five-minute video on something like symmetric groups, say. Then after that, what I'm going to ask you to do when you're watching this video is to submit a question or submit a comment. That's what the YouTube comment fields are for. They're more, for, they're more than just for flame wars. Uh, we can use them to submit questions and comments about the videos one to another so that I know, first of all, that you have watched the video. And second of all, you get a chance to ask a question. And before class, then I'm going to go in and look at those questions and you know check you off if you did it. Um, and then I'll use those questions to know sort of what we should focus on in the very beginning of our class, which is this mini lecture, this sort of mini 15-minute recap of what was in the videos, um, just to help iron out any confusion that there is about what was in there, about the definitions, or about the techniques that you'll be using during the day when you launch into group problem solving. And in those group problem solvings, what I'm going to have you do is each group uh, is going to focus on maybe one or two problems for the first phase of the class, and then after you've come up with solution or a proof or whatever to those problems, then you'll get back into different groups and present your problems one to another so that by the time the class is over, everybody's an expert on the problem that they created a solution for in the first place, but then also everybody has been presented uh, each of these problems one to another. So you get a chance to really focus on a couple of questions and then have your classmates fill you in on the others. And at the end of class, then we'll wrap up and we'll look ahead to the next topic for the next class. Big dates. Um, February, March, April, and May are the big months for our semester, and really the biggest dates that we have on the calendar right now at the beginning are, first and foremost, let's get spring break out of the way. It's a week later than it is usually. It's the 11th through 15th, but make sure you're not trying to come to class on those days. I'm sure you'll have that all worked out. But I do want to have our first exam before the break. So March 5th, the Tuesday before we leave for spring break, will be the first midterm exam. The second midterm exam will be on the 18th of April. And then the final uh, will be the first Thursday of finals week. So Tuesday, May 7th is reading day, so no class that day. And then the final exam itself is on the 9th of May, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock in our usual classroom. And of course, these exam dates are subject to change. If, uh, you know, if things don't progress as quickly or if they progress more quickly than I'm expecting, these dates might change a little bit with some notice, with the exception of the final exam date. That one's pretty much carved in stone by the registrar. Now, last thing I want to talk about is what you'll be doing this semester to earn that grade of yours. So what will I be assessing you on? First of all, homework is a major component of your work in this class. It'll be a 30% component of your grade. After all, homework is where a lot of your individual problem solving and pro forward of learning process goes on. So homework will be a major component. Those two midterms that I mentioned a little bit ago, each of them will be a 15% component of your grade. The final exam, again, Thursday, May 9th, 11 to 1, will be a 20% component. And then the rest is devoted to your engagement in the class. And the first portion of that engagement is what you do in class. So as long as you're in class and you're working with your groups and you're presenting problems one to another, that's going to be a 10% component. It's pretty much just a check mark. 
Um, then there's the pre-class preparedness. So the other reason for you to watch the videos, besides the fact that they help you to come to class prepared, is that I'll also be checking to make sure you're watching those videos before class and commenting on each one. As long as you've done that, again, you get the check mark for that preparedness. So as long as you're staying on top of the class, if you're watching the videos before class, you're making your comments, you're coming prepared, and you're engaging with your group, that's 20% of your grade that's already 100%. So uh, keep up with things, and we'll keep up with you. So if you're ready to go, here's the next thing to do. First of all, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Especially if you have a YouTube account, what this will make sure happens is that every time I upload a new lecture video like this one, it'll immediately come to your feed and you'll be able to watch it just like it's you know anything else that you're subscribed to, be it Justin Bieber or whatever. Um, and if you get a chance, share your username with the class if you'd like to. That way we know when you're posting a comment or a question on any of these videos that we know who we're talking to. Um, so make sure to comment on this video get started right away, um, and then visit the Moodle site uh, for our course, because after this video, the next thing for you to watch will be a short explanation of what are our learning objectives for this semester. In other words, what is Abstract Algebra 2 all about in some detail? What will you be able to do at the end of this semester as a result of being a successful student in Abstract Algebra 2? So your next, uh, your next points to do are right there on the screen, and I'll see you in the next video.